Happy February. My name is Laura Reed. I've been asked to speak during the 2022 Black History Month event for the South Atlantic Division of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Equal Employment Office. Our theme this year is health and wellness with a focus on non-traditional health and wellness practices. Throughout the month of February, lectures and activities will highlight what's being done and what needs to be done to foster good health and well-being. Given the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the racial disparities in healthcare that were illuminated in this season, we must take every precaution that we can to ensure that we have a fighting chance. The growth of fields such as public and community health have led to a rise in preventive care and a focus on body positivity, physical exercise, nutrition, exploring other dietary options such as vegan and vegetarian lifestyles, and gardening. Black health and wellness not only includes one's physical body, but also emotional and mental health. For the 2022 Black History Month observance, we will focus on both basic self-care and highlight an alternative healthcare method, essential oils. Before embarking on any changes to your medication or exercise routine, please consult your physician. Let's discuss some basic practices that will help anyone maintain optimal health. Water is an essential nutrient. It cleanses the body. The kidneys need water to eliminate toxins and waste products. When you get dehydrated, you tend to feel tired. Generally speaking, adults need half an ounce of water per pound, suggesting that a 150 pound person would consume 75 ounces of water. If you are on the heavier side, consider drinking up to one gallon per day. The quality of water is just as important as the quantity of water. Make sure you're drinking clean water. Consider purchasing a water filter when drinking water from your home tap. This will help filter out impurities and heavy metals like lead. Use refillable personal water containers rather than purchasing one-use plastic bottles to protect our environment from excess plastic. For those who don't enjoy the taste of plain water, infuse your water with lemons, limes, or any other fruit to enhance the taste. You may choose to drink herbal teas in addition to plain water, which are naturally decaffeinated. Examples of herbal teas are chamomile, ginger, or peppermint. Along with water, supplements are intended to enhance the nutrients that are missed in our diet. The extra nutrients that supplements provide prevent free radicals from harming healthy cells, speeds the repair of damaged cells, and facilitates new cell growth. The intended result is a longer, healthier, more vital life. A lab screen during your annual checkup with your primary physician will keep you informed of what basic nutrients you may be lacking. Estimates say only 21% of Americans get the re recommended seven to nine hours of sleep each night. The proper amount of sleep is important for quality of life issues, such as cell renewal and rejuvenation, stress management, cognitive function, safety, and weight management. Sleep can be impeded by being overcommitted, overstimulated, not having enough downtime, or by physical exhaustion. Here are some tips to help you get quality sleep if you're having problems getting to sleep or staying asleep. Calculate your best time and set a schedule for sleeping. Start with the time you want to wake up and then count backwards seven to nine hours. That would be the time to go to sleep. Don't eat a heavy meal one to two hours before bedtime, which may cause some discomfort. Refrain from drinking caffeine no later than 2 p.m. daily. Instead, drink a relaxing herbal tea 30 minutes to an hour before bedtime. Examples are chamomile or a sleep blend. Prepare your environment for sleep by setting your house temperature between 60 and 70 degrees. This lowers your body's internal thermometer, initiating sleepiness. 
Getting the proper amount of sleep also reduces stress. Stress is mental or bodily tension caused by a physical, chemical, or emotional factor. When you are under constant stress, your body produces hormones that can suppress your immune system and make you more susceptible to illness. Stress can also lead to making poor choices about diet, exercise, and sleep. You may have noticed that people who are under chronic stress may demonstrate emotional or physical symptoms such as tension, irritability, trouble concentrating, anger or sadness, headaches, back pains, or stomach problems to name a few. Although it's impossible to avoid stress, it can be managed by taking up a hobby, which is a healthy escape from daily obligations and expectations. It helps to take your mind off your worries. Gardening, sewing, and painting are some common hobbies. Consider meditation or deep breathing. Studies have shown that it increases calmness and physical relaxation. Spend time in nature, such as your yard, a park, or near a water feature like a lake or fountain. A healthy diet aids the body in staying healthy. We should all incorporate more fruits and vegetables in our meals. Fruits and vegetables are very filling, full of water, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and will help our bodies fight disease. 75% of chronic diseases in the U.S. are related to a diet high in packaged, processed, and fast foods. Choose to eat smart foods, which includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, herbs, spices, and baked or broiled seafood. Pre-plan your meals for the week to save time. If you need inspiration for healthy recipes, you can find thousands of them suited for your taste on Pinterest or on YouTube. Along with a healthy diet, movement is just as important for good health. Doctors suggest 30 minutes of exercise at least five days a week for heart health. Although there are many types of exercises that can benefit the body, Walking does not require any special equipment. It's free. It can be practiced in small or large areas, indoors or outdoors, alone or with others. Walking reduces your risk of chronic disease, improves your mood, and lowers the levels of stress hormones. We've discussed some basic health and wellness habits. Now, I would like to highlight one non-traditional health and wellness practice that has become more popular in later years, and that is the use of essential oils. Essential oils are naturally occurring aromatic compounds derived from the bark, roots, flowers, resins, and other parts of plants, herbs, and fruits. They have been used throughout history for their ability to support mankind emotionally, physically, mentally, and on a spiritual level. Pure essential oils are potent. It takes 60 roses to make a single drop of rose oil, 75 lemons to make one 15 milliliter bottle of lemon oil. Pure essential oils are safe. Essential oils are re referenced over 600 times in the Bible as fragrances, odors, ointments, aromas, perfumes, and sweet savors. In ancient civilization, they were used as gifts for anointing kings, for perfumes, and for cleansing. Pure essential oils are economical compared to other products. One 15 milliliter bottle holds 250 drops. Normally, you would use one or two drops at a time. That facilitates many uses for one bottle. There are three ways to use essential oils. First, through smell. You can apply one or two drops in the palm of your hands and inhale. Or you can use an essential oil diffuser and let it permeate the air. Second, it can be used topically or on the skin. You can apply one or two drops on the back of your neck, on the bottom of your feet, or on the affected area of concern. 
It can also be added to your personal care products such, such as lotion, moisturizer, shampoo, or conditioner. The third method for using essential oils is internally. A word of caution, only use pure or therapeutic organic oils when taken internally. Read the bottle to check if the oil is safe for internal use. One or two drops can be consumed in a glass of water, tea, or juice. It can also be taken in a veggie capsule or by placing a drop under your tongue. How does my family use essential oils? Internally, we drop lemon or orange oil in our water to detox or to enhance the taste of our water. We use it in cooking for an upset stomach, to open our airways for breathing and as a mouthwash. Topically, we rub it on the soles of our feet to assist with sleep at night. We use it for cuts, scrapes, and burns. Aromatically, we diffuse the oil during the day to cleanse the air and to kill germs and bacteria. Using essential oils is just one non-traditional approach to health and wellness. There are many more. In summary, make a commitment to improve your health today. Start with an annual visit with your doctor and review your lab work. We all need to stay hydrated, to focus on healthy food choices, to improve our sleep habits, and to move more. Don't try to change everything all at once. Little steps toward a lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, are better than no steps at all. Thank you for participating in this year's Black History Month event.